here we go hello alex iceman welcome to the call sir how are you i am fantastic jeff how are you I am doing great. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I'm looking forward to learning a lot about you, everything that you're into, you know, all, all your expertise in, you know, picking that smart brain and, you know, making me feel like I have a lot more to learn, which I always do anyway. <laughs> but let's start off with the name. Alex Absolutely. Iceman, because I hear Iceman, I'm just thinking Top Gun. Well, yes, that's that's a very common reference I get all the time, and I honestly didn't get it up until a certain point when I watched Top Gun again, and I've kind of that then when it clicked. Um, that is my alias. That's I, I go by Iceman uh, for quite many years now, and uh, the story there is an interesting story behind that. Um, I, you know, growing up in Russia, I, I was born and raised in Moscow, and I lived there up until I was 24 years old. Okay. And uh, the last name is Ladovsky. And in Russian language, it loosely translates to Iceman. And the first part of it is ice, and um, the second part of the last name is belongs to, to ice. And uh, that when I uh, choose Iceman, and it was actually way back when I didn't even know Top Gun. I was still back in Russia. And uh, I opened up a company called Iceman Films, where I was just doing a lot of uh, video stuff and uh, video editing and uh, shooting a bunch of videos for different events. And uh, that's how I uh, pretty much named my first company when I moved here. It was Iceman Softworks. And I started doing a lot of consultancy around building mobile apps. And I have personally built over 100 mobile apps and oh, was wow. involved in, in, in releasing those um, as well. Um, either fully uh, from end to end or uh, partially as a, a team member. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, funny enough, uh, when you move to the United States, um, they don't really quite get your last name, and uh, they all had a hard time pronouncing them right. And since let me give um, it, what was it? so what was the last name? Ladovsky. And Ladovsky. if you read it, and if you read it uh, just just this morning at, at a bank. Uh, a lady called, um, like, they, they, she, she looked at my last name and this, she, she said, uh, Ladovsky. Ladovsky, it's I, not, I guess, right. I guess maybe if you're looking at it on paper, it might look a little different. Exactly. So every time I would visit a client and I would go into their office and uh, typically the way it goes, the first the, the first office visit, I typically go with a CTO and, you know, we, we talk as the CTOs are, majority of uh, communications I have are, um, with uh, with CTOs and oh. uh, he would go and introduce introduce myself to to the whole group and uh, he would go and he would stagger he was he would say Alex and then I could see he's trying to remember my last name or he would do something and then since the company's name was Iceman Softworks he would just start saying Iceman from uh, Alex from Iceman and then and then uh, that became a, a thing and then he just said this is Iceman this is Alex Iceman and. Uh, Instead of fighting this and trying to correct everybody's uh, thing, I just you know accepted the fact and said, okay. So I think it just naturally rolls uh, onto on, onto myself as a brand, and 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 then since then I just start calling myself Alex Iceman, and and that that's when everybody started to acknowledge me as Iceman and kind of made sense. Um, the other funny story is, uh, and that's something I don't know if you picked it up from uh, from. Uh, uh, conversation on the information about myself. Uh, I'm a professional ice hockey referee, and I've been doing I that did, for seventeen years. I did see years. that, and your Instagram exactly. has a bunch of hockey. And so, exactly. and I'm so I'm I'm originally from Hawaii, so I don't really understand the whole hockey thing. I mean, I get it because you know, as a kid, I watched Mighty Ducks one, two, and three, so exactly. I know everything about hockey, right? So not really, but you know, um, I know it's a big thing because up here in Seattle. Uh, I think they just final finalized like so we're we're getting our hockey team and so a lot of people are excited about that so it'll it'll be interesting on how it plays I'm a fan of 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 sports in general like if I had to pick one it'll probably be um you know you know traditional football so soccer um, yep. because I played that my whole life or nice. American football because I also played that and then if it came to watching like the Olympics I'll pay attention to the track and field because I was a sprinter and relays and all that stuff. But outside nice. of that, it's just kind of like like I think sports in general because it, it pulls it pulls from as an athlete, right? It pulls from a different side of the human body because it forces you to 
strengthen your mind because your coach is going to be there, your training coach, your conditioning coach. They're going to beat your body up. And, exactly. And so it's the only thing that's going to get you through that physical beating is the mindset. And that's where I don't think that a lot of professional athletes are given the credit that they deserve, you know, like the LeBron James or the Wayne Gretzky's or whoever it is. It's like, sure, they're the best for a reason. Exactly. And there, there is tremendous effort that goes into it. Tremendous daily sacrifice and routines. And mm-hmm. a lot of, a lot of the, a lot of the workouts, you know, a lot of the people that support the athlete that goes into it, just, just personally for myself, I have three different coaches or personal trainers for one for skating, one for conditioning, one for mental strength. And I'm just an official, right? And if you look at the profession, I'm an official right now, uh, work the American hockey league and uh, I work as a professional hockey referee. And uh, I'm among, among, among those NHL starts that are starting up in the American hockey league. And I see how many people support them and how they, how their ethics helps them to, to be at the top level. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, growing up as as an athlete, that that's what I've been doing for the first half of my life, and um, started picking up degree in mathematics and computer science, and that's how I got into software. Okay. And uh, and, and then moving, you know, for, fast forward, opened up a company and started business and started helping more and more companies to uh, to grow and, and build their uh, soft tech and 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 software teams. Um, a lot of the mentality that I brought from sports helped me tremendously in business. Um, it's mm-hmm. all about those routines. It's it's all about the work ethics, right? It's all about your reputation. Same thing happens at hockey, right? So you go out in the, on the ice or as an athlete on, on the court, on the field, um, you have a reputation, right? You have your skills, you have your reputation, and then you also have to deal with a lot of um, professionals. Like in my case, um, I deal with uh, 40, 45 professionals on the ice for a two-hour slot and they're uh, sometimes they're angry. There's high emotions, yep. and I have to manage that. It's very similar uh, to uh, running a business. You have your employees, you have your customers, you have issues, and you have to manage and get through that in the most efficient way. Um, and you're a professional lot, a, manager of chaos. Exactly. Exactly. Couldn't say it better. Yeah, I think that's that's just anything with. Um management or ownership or anything right like like your worth and your growth is going to be 100 percent dependent on how well you can manage chaos because it's not your everybody can can be successful when everything is perfect and going good but when everybody's pissed off everybody has an issue who's going to be the calm to the storm and it has to be you otherwise everything fails Exactly. And uh, a lot a lot of the uh, interesting mindset that goes into it, and I didn't realize up until a certain point where I started working with the very senior officials that, that worked in NHL and that worked American Hockey League for many years, mm-hmm. and they've seen it all. They, they have over a thousand uh, games under the belt. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the great officials, uh, Ryan Hersey, I just worked with him uh, last night. I, he taught me a great lesson of uh, of being calm at any situation, and and being calm helps to you know ease things down, and you don't really elevate your emotions up to that level, and that that honestly ruins everything. Once you elevate emotions too high, yeah, and then you cannot think clearly, you cannot think straight, and the same in business. If you start elevating emotions at an at an issue uh, with a customer or with an employee or with anybody you you, you communicate with. Um, then it doesn't do any good because you're, you know, you're getting hyped, you're getting emotional, mm-hmm. and you're not getting things done, resolved, or um, else. Uh, so pretty, pretty interesting uh, an- analogy. And uh, um, I, you know, appreciate you being an athlete as well, so you understand the mindset and what what goes into this. This this is phenomenal. Yeah, it, it is, and I think a lot of people, you know, even for myself, you like you never really think about it. Is that the refs? You know, so the people were in your shoes or skates, <laughs> exactly. um, they're, they like they're keeping up with them with these, you know, top fit professional. Absolutely. You know, physically just trained athletes. I mean, they're not keeping up with like you're not going to like say for American football. Right. Like the ref is not going to run like 
a four two forty, but right. he can like he can probably outrun the majority of people out there because he's got to be able to see everything going on on the field and same for you on the ice and you know like they say everything's faster on ice right and so you have to keep up and i don't even know how you guys even see where the puck is going because that (laughs) (laughs) counts with the training well a lot of the time as an official you 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 split you split your attention and that that has so many so much similarities with business um, majority of the time, we know where to look for for a certain penalty, so we're we're not uh, puck focused all the time. We know where the puck is with a peripheral vision, mm-hmm. but typically we're looking for players. We constantly have to look at in hockey as an example, right? We, so we have five players from one team, five players from the other team, and two goalies on the ice. Um, at the same time, you usually have five micro matches happening because we have five on five. And every every player takes his own player, and they kind of circle around, and they and they interact with each other in certain ways. So we always divide attention to five different uh-huh. micro micro games, and making sure that we see that. And everybody's um, just trying to see what they can get away with when you're not looking. Exactly, that that happens quite a lot. Now it's happening <laughs> less because we have four officials, uh, we have four sets of eyes, and we are you know trying to do our best not to be play focused, puck focused, and see everything. Sometimes we miss stuff, but you know, well, that, well it's that's a, part, a, that's of, a, part of the game. That's every, that's everything, though. Exactly. You know, nothing like you're never gonna catch everything. No, no, and that's you know, for us, it's making sure the game is safe and fair, and uh, we make sure that we get rid of the hits that are not do not belong in, in a certain game, and make sure that emotions um, are properly managed, mm-hmm. and uh, we keep it safe and fair. That's what we do. No, I love it. And I love that you you trend you brought the transition on how, you know, managing your emotions in, in athletics and in sports and, and all the training that you go through and then you were able to apply that in business. I would love for you to kind of just share with everybody on not only how you're able to apply that type of mindset and discipline to business, but just life in general. Because you're not just if it usually when you look at people of, you know, air quotes here, success, right? It's not, hey, they're a success only in this vertical. No. Majority of the time, they're successful in this vertical, but then they're also successful in this vertical and in another vertical. I mean, they're not successful 100% across the board, but their their track record of success usually follows them because it's an internal discipline. And I totally agree. And thanks for allowing me to share my story. And I think for each and everybody that would that the mindset and the framework will be different. Mm-hmm. For me, I um, I had to learn and adjust coming from sports. Um, the first thing I brought over to uh, my business and mindset from sports is your work ethics. Uh, work ethics is number one. Uh, for me, and uh, being responsible for myself, for the company, for my body, for the employees, for the clients, and uh, just being honest, uh, uh, working hard. So when I started started up my first company, I worked really, really, really hard uh, to get to a certain point, to get to certain goals that that created a lot of stress. Obviously, <laughs> that's probably you know stress management is another different topic. That's a that whole I, another know, conversation. Absolutely, <laughs> that's, a I, ep- that's a week long. That's a week long podcast. Honestly, I'm getting towards uh, managing it way better now um, because sport helps tremendously. We are under pressure all the time, so I know now how to manage stress. Uh, but coming back to the mindset, so work ethics, and I worked really hard um, uh, up until a person also told me that not only you have to work really hard, but you also have to work smart in yep. business. In sports, majority of the time, you just work hard. Um, in business, you also have to work hard and smart. So that's that part I had to learn yeah. the hard way. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of what, what helped me to, to get to the level I'm at right now is, uh, setting up my routines. Routines are extremely important. And then, um, they, they actually go even deeper. And as I started learning different routines and by routines, I mean, uh, at, you know, in sports, you have to work out at a certain time at a certain day, certain amount of hours, and you find a way to do that constantly and that's your routine you go in you work out you stretch and you maintain your body to be ready physically and mentally um to do a hockey game or and yep. to go and do a very stressful meeting with a client it's pretty much the same thing honestly to me um kind of yeah. it's kinda just feel- it's just working out that muscle getting it ready for for game time exactly 
Um, I work out three times a week. Um, I, I usually have two hockey games a, a, a night. So, uh, I mean, a week as well. Um, I was going to say two hockey games a night. I was like, you are nah, in way better shape nah, than I'm. <laughs> it, used, used, it, used to be, it used to be two hockey games at night, um, a night when I would do um, either adults or kids. Now I only do one or two games a week. And uh, three, so I'm, I'm working out pretty much every day, uh -huh. um, three times a week at a gym. Um, I stretch constantly, so I maintain my body ready. Uh, same happens at business, so I translate that th same mentality. If we're talking about sales, I have the same routine. You have to constantly do sales. You have to constantly set up a process, and that routine and doing sales or doing operations or setting up certain things or training your employees, this all is uh, the same routine. You, you just set it up and you follow it. And, yeah. Um, I have coaches, I have business coaches as well. I have, you know, personal um, athlete coaches and that also helps a lot because they, they keep you accountable. Uh, but you, over time as a professional athlete, you, you learn to keep yourself accountable to it. So that was the first uh, thing that I've transferred over from sports to business. Love it. Um, help helps a lot, just work hard and then add a little bit work, work smart thing and then uh, that is a very good foundation for, for, for success at anything you do. No, I love it. It's it's what it's something that one of my mentors uh, told me a, a long time ago, and he said, "Jeff, here's here's one thing that will always work, because you can be the most talented person in the room, but if all you're gonna do is rely on your talent, you're going to lose 100 percent of the time, because there's gonna be somebody out there that's not as talented in you as you, but they are working ten times harder." And they are going to win every time because hard work beats talent when talent won't work hard. And I think that's just exactly. that's true across the board, whether it's sports, whether it's business. You know, I think it's Mark Cuban says it all the time, right? He said, you need to work like there's somebody else working trying to take everything you have. I don't exactly. know if those are the exact words, but then obviously he's applying that to business. But I think that's it's very applicable in whether it's sports, business, you know, and in life, because in life there's a big sense of entitlement going around these days, but it's like, you don't deserve anything. You deserve what you have. And if you want more, then get off your butt and work for it. Exactly. <laughs> well, um, it's good. If you enjoy, you enjoy the pursuit of the, your potential. It's good. If you know what you're good at, but I think you have that baseline of discipline and you have that baseline of work ethics and that you know how to get things done, you can mm -hmm. apply it to any industry, any field you want, and you'll achieve a very, very good success. Uh, you might not be the best, you might not be the Elon Musk of, of a, a you know specific industry, but you will get to a very good point where you will feel very, very comfortable, and, and um, hopefully you get to help a lot of people along the way uh, with this. No, absolutely, and I love that you. I love that you brought up Elon Musk. You know, so you, a lot of people when they try to start off. You know, say in business, right? You know, so you're in, in software and like apps and all of that fun stuff. You know, everybody and, and their cousin wants to be the next Mark Zuckerberg or the next Elon Musk or the next Jeff Bezos. And it's like you, you realize you're comparing yourself to people that you cannot compare yourself to. At least at that stage. because You know, know what that. I mean? Like they started somewhere, but like, sure, maybe at some point, you know, but maybe in 20 years. You might accomplish that because what, everything that Mark Zuckerberg accomplished up until today didn't happen right no. away in his, in his Harvard dorm room. You know, exactly. and so I think a lot of people, they, they compare themselves to these people that have just achieved so much. And they're like, oh, I'm not there yet. It's like, well, of course you're not. You never will be there, honestly. And hopefully, you know, I, I, I hope that I will never be there where I want to be because I always shoot for the highest goal. Yeah. And I, I, lo I love the process mm -hmm. and I, I get bored when I get there. I need the next and the next step. I'm overachiever and I'm a, that I'm competitive overachiever. So for me, first, acknowledging that helps not to put too much stress on myself, but also I know what drives me. I know what how I should motivate myself or inspire myself. Um, and Jeff Bezos started in a, in a small room selling books. And, uh, yep. I think that teaches us a lesson to be very patient, patient at what you do and just apply the routine, apply the process, work smart, work really hard, surround yourself with good people and, uh, um, do what, do what you love, follow your passion. And I, those are very good. You know, there are 
there are very broad words, but those are the key words you kind of have to live by to get to you know to to a successful position like Bezos or Musk. Yeah, you know, you have to master the mundane. You know, success is a very boring process because you have to get really good at doing the same thing over and 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 you're going to get bored of it and guess what you're still going to have to be able to execute perfectly on it all the time and get others to do the same exactly and uh even even more so um uh, interestingly i i just want to point out uh maybe that it will help a lot of people because uh when i started my first company and you know the sec start second company genium uh, where we build great mobile applications and websites for large corporations. And uh, I can go on and on and on about this. And oh, we're going to go there. <laughs> right. But uh, just want to share one thing is that, that helped me a lot. And uh, maybe somebody who is listening, that will help them too. Um, as a CEO, I didn't understand what the CEO means and what are my uh, what is my job description, right? What what am I dealing with? And all the time I would open up my email and I get tons of problems. And I would be, oh my God, again, there's another email, there's another email. And I was I was scared to open up my email and just look <laughs> through my mailbox. Up until the point I've realized that my job is to sort out the most critical problems there is in the company because everything else is getting sorted out at the levels below me and, and, and guys typically do a great job at sorting this out. And then something that they couldn't figure out guess what who's gonna deal with this and yep, yep. when I accepted that I deal with 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 crap pretty much that's my job like daily daily routine open up and deal with the most complicated problems there is because yep. nobody else could figure that out You're when a I accepted that exactly when I accepted that it became so much easier now I want to open it up because I, I acknowledge this is part of my job I expect that every time I open it up I know that those are challenges. I'm super happy to help my team to figure those uh, problems out. But now I understand what to expect. And I was fighting that. Now I accept it and, and actually enjoying it because uh, every day there's a, a new challenge. You have to apply critical thinking, you know, out, out of the box thinking to figure things out. No, I love it. And I, and I love your goal of just always wanting to be that much better. You just have that ambition. I think it was Matthew McConaughey when he was giving one of his, you know, the actor and all right, all right, all right. That guy, he, um, one of his speeches was his, his hero was himself 10 years from now. Yes. And it was like, I'm always pursuing. And I think it was like, he's always pursuing that guy. It's like all the stuff that I'm going to accomplish over the next day. Like that's who I'm trying to get to. And then I it's like, like well, that. well, who's going to be your hero in 10 years? It's like, well, it's going to be me in 10, 10 years from now. Exactly. And I was like, this... that makes so much sense because now you eliminated any reason for you to be disappointed because you're not comparing yourself to someone else. And I think exactly. that's that's one of the leading causes of, you know, depression or failure or unhappiness and, and all of that stuff, all that negativity that you're going to start doing in your self-talk is because you're comparing yourself to everybody else and it's like none of you are all in the same exact situation so stop comparing yourself to people who aren't in your shoes honestly there is two, two things that i can uh, i can comment on here so comparing if, if you have time enough time to compare and be depressed about this the fact that somebody else is more successful I don't think you work hard enough because when you work hard enough, your schedule is packed. <laughs> you don't have time to, to even think or look things up. Love you it. hear things here and there. Um, as you know, right after this podcast, I have to drive and do a workout. After you know doing this, I'm, I'm going up and picking up my um, a VR headset. So I'm going to be doing setting things up there. And then I have my routine. And uh, also, I'm, um, I'm a student pilot. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning to fly airplanes. So I have to d d dedicate a certain time. At, that and every day to study to read so i have my schedule once i, I go back home i open up a book and i read uh because that's the safety right in my routine i don't have time to even think about somebody else doing this i have my own goal i'm, I'm inspired and i you know i pick some stuff here and there where you know spacex how they've tested this new thing that just blew up and I, I know what's going on, but I'm not jealous. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm more inspired and, and just happy to go and, and pursue my, my goals and my happiness because I've got one life. 
This Swan is true. Life. This is true. And so um, I want to ask you a couple questions. Um, off your Instagram, I saw a couple posts, um, and I'd love for you to dive into them a little bit. One is, well, for this first one, it might be really fun because I'm a huge Gary V fan. And what's with the VaynerX, Vayner Media photo that you did last year? Right. So um, uh, we have a uh, great partnership with the Vayner Media and Gary's team. And uh, Genium works with Vayner Media on very interesting, exciting projects. Uh, we work with uh, their team to support businesses. Um, we help to build uh, software tech and they helped um, to build marketing things for some of our clients. Yep. So we got a chance to work hand in hand with with uh, Gary's team and Vayner Media um, and uh, still still working up the uh, you know on, on on a project right now and uh, super happy with the way the relationship is going there's so much energy that Gary and his team puts um, in in everything they do oh they're and, a thousand uh, percent energy uh, you know and it's just hard not to be energetic around this guy <laughs> and around his team and uh, I think it's a very good match for us and uh, we we got introduced and we hit it off and uh, uh, doing amazing things together and uh, I'm an expert in software and you know he's an expert in marketing and that's guess what you know companies and clients need they do need marketing and they do need software, they need software. And... <laughs> exactly no that's great and and the second um, post that I just I absolutely love is ideas are shit execution is the game <laughs> that's my favorite one I, like that's i saw my... that i was like oh i need to ask him about this because this is me all day long it's like i don't care what you're like what are you doing i look i i always say that i beat my competitors by just hard working because i can work eight eight to 12 to 13 hours a day and i can work seven days a week which you know adds up to 120 hours a week, and I can build and just outwork my competitors. Uh, that that is one. And I also look at a lot of the businesses, and I see a lot of the companies that are coming in to work with us. Um, and I realize that you don't really have to invent something something new that have not has not been invented um, before. You just have to take an idea, do it better than other people do, and and run with it, and yep. you will be successful. And that just that just proves the theory that ideas worth nothing without execution, because um, that what the execution is where the fun starts. Um, Absolutely. And my favorite one is you get into uh, any Uber driver, and I love Uber drivers. Uh, and you <laughs> share that you build applications with them, and you say, hey, I'm, you know, I used to be a software engineer, now I run a company of uh, 85 people, and we build great mobile apps and websites and whatnot. And the first thing, majority of them come back and say, well, I've got an app idea. And they share, you know, some sort of, you know, um, app idea or even further, they would ask you to sign an NDA, yeah. which I'm skeptical. We, we do, of <laughs> course, do NDAs, but uh, I have my schedule is so packed. I'm not even able to think for anything else. We have internal products at Genium. We have our customers. I have sports, planes, podcasts, everything. Stay so, in your lane. Right. There's my lane. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I love what I do. Uh, and and they don't understand. And and then the first question I, I ask, uh, what have you done so far to make that idea a reality? Uh -huh. And the answer is obviously, well, I just thought about that. Or the most the most uh, uh, furthest one I I found is I wrote something down, and now I want to get investors. Um, so I I understand there's zero work has been put into that product, not let alone finding customers, researching target market researching the uh, you know the need the niche everything there's nothing that they've done and i understand their, that their if I first take... response is like oh i want to find investors it's like oh so you're looking for a handout exactly and <laughs> those those look and in, in finding investors is a good tool and uh, it has to come at a certain time and you have to be prepared but i always think that business have to be profitable first yeah and there once has to you be start... groundwork Exactly. And then once you start bringing revenue, the only thing you need the investment money for is to basically scale up. Once you have everything set up, you're ready to scale up, you go and find a partner, you go find an investor, and then you scale up um, as crazy. But you have to be ready to scale up, which yeah. is – uh, a lot of the businesses don't understand. They have a problem from scaling from $5 million to $10 million, from $10 million to $50 million. 
those are known uh, benchmarks where where people struggle to scale. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you have to be ready and you have to know how to scale and, and ask for investment money at the right time. And there's a lot of work. Uh, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the things I would ask, do you have a pitch deck? And 99% um, would say no. So What's a deck? Uh, yeah, what, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> and and it, you would be amazed, even even some businesses or entrepreneurs that that are starting up, they have the product, they're uh, on the market, they don't have a a, a pitch deck, and they're just asking uh, for an introduction to an investor, or they want to talk to you, and um, that consumes time. So I explain them, prepare your pitch deck, give me something to read it and and understand how I can help if yeah. I'm the right person, and typically there's nothing. Yeah, what's new, Execu right? Ex execution is the key. So I don't really, I can take any idea, anything, and and build a, build a business around it. And I can probably do it better than somebody else, and outwork them, and figure out a way to 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 build a better parking spot or build a better, I don't know, anything, just something better. And then it's all about the team. It's all about the process and inspiring the team to think outside of the box. And they will figure out from you know a parking spot, a parking garage, from a parking garage an entertaining center, uh, uh, you know, that you build around that. And mm -hmm. as long as you have the process and, and the mindset and the work ethics, um, you'll, you'll, you'll get there. I love it. I love it. I love it. I want to be very respectful of your time. And I'd love to chat with you a little bit after uh, the, the recording. Um, but, sure. So right now, um, I would love for you to take, you know, uh, two minutes, five minutes and really just share everything that you're working on. Where can anybody and everybody find you? Um, I know you have like Genium. You had your first company. If if you're still doing that, or, or you, you, I know you're on Instagram, but just here's your your five minute slot to just one big ad. Absolutely. Well, look, I'm 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 grateful for for the time, and uh, I just want to start off with uh, with saying that everything I do is to help other people. I I really passionate about helping businesses, helping companies, helping startups um, to grow. And I feel joy in helping them. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, through Genium, we build great teams, great software teams, and we have tremendous, great office in Buenos Aires, Argentina. We have an office in New York. We have office here in the Bay Area. Um, we work on end-to-end -end products. Uh, we help companies to build either a mobile app or um, iOS, Android, web apps, backends, anything that's related to software engineering. Uh, we tend to specialize on cybersecurity. Uh, a majority of our clients care about data. Uh, we have great processes and security processes in place in the company to um, to allow high engineers to build great products, and we architect them properly so we have less issues down the road. Um, and uh, pretty much work with clients who who value quality. And uh, I, that also comes from you know from sports as well. You know checklists. Um, um, I started flying airplanes. I find a lot of common things with checklists and processes, and I think process is very important uh, uh, key tool to ensure success of the product and success of a, and the quality of the product. Um, so we do that. We do we do build a lot of software. We also build teams. We augment teams. We do team extensions where where companies want to hire five, ten, twenty more engineers in, in our location in Argentina. We would do that, and that matches up time zones with the United States perfectly. It's one hour difference with New York and four hours with California, depending on the time of the year. Mm -hmm. um, so they work the same business hours and a great mentality. I find that working with people in um, in Buenos Aires, specifically in Argentina, uh, there a lot of them are extroverts. They love to talk. They love communication, and that's the key. I think communication is the key in everything, and they love to talk, and that's a very happy marriage uh, when those guys uh, share their ideas, jump on a phone, and that just contributes to the success of uh, everything we do. Um, so where you can find me, that's uh, – you can find me on Instagram, on LinkedIn. You can just Google Alex Iceman and uh, – You'll you'll see plenty of links where where you can find me. Um, I'm pretty responsive on Instagram. Uh, the Alex Iceman. Um, just add me there, follow there, and uh, I'll be happy to answer questions. Uh, in fact, a lot of the small startups write write um, on Instagram to me and they ask questions and advice, and I typically just respond and help them out and 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 tell them what to do, what not to do. And uh, um, I've been having a blast doing that actually last night when a guy was just texting about investment. <laughs> It's like you created your own little 
text version on Instagram of Shark Tank. <laughs> uh, pretty much, but I like to, I'd like to uh, look. I've I've struggled so much without. Uh, I didn't know how to ask for help at a certain time, so I was trying to do work hard and do figure things out on my own, and that was a huge mistake. Is I was not efficient. Um, now I started asking for help, and I, I help other people as well because I don't want them to waste their life. We've got one life. You you know you have only a certain amount of time to go. And if I can save somebody's time in this life and, and, and share my experience um, and allow them to spend that time with their family or loved ones, uh, I'm happy to do that, uh, just regardless and uh, in any, any form or shape. Uh, LinkedIn is a great tool. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I, I'm pretty responsive there as well. Um, and uh, just in general, look, uh, you know, go and uh, come over and watch some hockey games here in California. Um, that's where a majority of the games I do in Northern California and uh, – uh, see me working on the ice. Um, and uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, and something that pretty much requires a very long discussion, but uh -huh. uh, something that I wanted to mention uh, on your podcast is um, we're starting to build a community of engineers around the world to fight cancer. So, uh, we've, we've, we've gathered tremendous amount of uh, computer science engineers that are specialized in machine learning and AI and computer vision. Okay. And uh, they're starting to engage in certain prototype projects where we can analyze certain data um, to see if we can uh, fight cancer in any way or form. I, I don't think we'll, we'll be able to find the cure, but at least to move move the, the industry forward. And I think if engineers uh, come together and start contributing more and, 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 and do act as cross-discipline bridge um, and bring technology over to that field, I think we will be able to move closer to find the solution like um, antibiotics for anything else that was, uh, that, you know, a, a regular flu was uh, pretty much a, a almost a death sentence a, a hundred years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Right, and, and now we kind of look at it as, okay, I need to, to, to get antibiotics and I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah. So I think there, there is a solution similar to that. I do want to contribute and build community around this problem and, and anybody who can help is, you know, feel free to reach out and we're just starting up to build the group and we have certain projects internally, but I feel that we, I, we, I need to engage the larger community to help and progress in this sense. So something that I just wanted to throw out there. No, I love it. So what we'll do is um, I'll get, so stay on, the, stay on the line here after the call, but um, you know, what we'll do is we'll, we'll set up um, another podcast. We'll make it like maybe a 15, 20 minute uh, podcast and it's going to be re you just really sharing all the information that you want to share, what you're looking for, what your mission is, and all that stuff. And we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and get that set up here shortly. Um, but I do appreciate you taking some time to come on the call today. It's It's been Absolutely. a real blessing. And like, I like once you said like, oh, I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting my, you know, I'm take, doing my flight classes to get my, li my pilot's license. I'm like, I hate you, but I love you so much because that's, <laughs> that's like one of my dreams and uh, my wife keeps pushing me to just like, just go start the classes. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, there's so many other things I'm working on and there's this and there's that and that. But it's just like, the more I think about it and the more I hear, and then it's like, you think about a yellow car, then you start seeing yellow cars everywhere. And now it's exactly. like, oh yeah, I'm taking flight lessons and I'm doing this. So like, oh yeah, I have my pilot's license. So it's like, ah, oh, I need to just do it. So the, uh, you know, you allow me to do, uh, to, to share a story a couple of minutes. So um, a year ago I was, um, Year and a half ago, I was at a NHL preseason tournament, and I was working as a referee and blessed to be part of the, the community um, and work the NHL games preseason. Um, I I had a mole that started to evolve, and I, I I went to check it up, and doctor said that well we need to take a closer look, and they um, they pretty much t took it off, analyzed it, and I've got a call, and they they pretty much said that you're one step away from cancer. If you would have waited for two months more, then probably you would you know you wouldn't be able to skate um, on the ice. Yeah. And that, that struck me so much. And I have a scar on my arm, left arm, that reminds me now that you've got one life. You never know when the, you know, the, the, the time ends and you gotta, you gotta just do what you wanna do without regret. And that's when I went out and I found great people um, who suggested me a flight instructor and they, they told me how to find the, the right school, the right, the right setup. Mm -hmm. And I just went for it. And I love it every day. I just enjoy enjoy my life now more and more because I know that it's not forever. You've got a limited amount of time. Um, 
and and now is a good there's never a good time just go for now it is the best time for everything now is the best time no i love it thank you so much for your time today i appreciate it. stay on for a little bit here after the call so we can chat a little bit but make sure you guys check him out uh his uh, genium is his company he's on instagram just look him up he's everywhere under the alex iceman i believe that's is that the same on as linkedin as well yes perfect um, just yeah there is one alex iceman that you won't be able to you know <laughs> Perfect. That's another benefit. Perfect. I love you. I appreciate it. And thank you to, so thank much you, for Jeff. your time. And we'll have you back Absolutely. again here. We'll have you back again to talk about the, the cancer uh, research. Thank you, Jeff. Have a good one. You too.